Eden or welcome back to Banished. Right, we're going to look today a little bit more at the game. We're going to look at certainly, I think, why I would recommend you purchase this. And um, we're going to look maybe more at the kind of catalogue of gaming, as in what, why do you game, what do you game with. Um, and more importantly, I think there's something quite interesting to be said about the types of game you've got. Ever looked at your Steam library, for example, and said, right, what kind of games do I have? What's the prevailing generation of, or, or general category I have? Um, I did this and um, I was amazed to see it was shooters. I honestly didn't think it would be. I thought I was a, you know, a kind of quasi management wannabe, you know, uh, dude. And I thought it would be like, you know, oh, look at all the management games I've got. But no, apparently, you know, the, the majority of games I have under my command is, um, is actually shooters. So um, that's pretty cool. And it's a shame because if I look at my Steam list, which has got, you know, many, many games in there um, from years of buying them, um, I'm a bit disappointed to see that there's so many in there that I never completed. Um, I think this is one of the sort of sad things of maybe doing a channel, um, a YouTube channel, because you kind of dabble, you get involved in a game and then you walk away from it. Plus, let's face it, how many games nowadays actually have an ending? There's not many, is there? I mean, Titanfall, when that came out, which is not on Steam, by the way, um, so when Titanfall came out, it was pretty evident that that was um, going to be a story campaign. But it's a bit wishy-washy, so, you know, even when you've done the campaign, there's kind of, that's not it, there's loads, there's, in fact, there's so much more to do. Um, the biggest one I'm, I have a major issue with is Borderlands 2. I love that game and I never completed it. I Trouble and I played it for about, I don't know, three minutes, <laughs> and we then just gave up on it. It's not that we gave up on it, we did, if you, if you watch the channel, you may remember we did our Christmas advent calendar on it. Um, and we played up to that point, so it's literally where you meet that weird British guy with the dodgy leg, um, who, I don't know, you know, you wouldn't trust him around kids, let's say. Um, and th that was where we stopped, because it was kind of like, oh, well, you know, we we've got, you know, that's a wrap for this one. And then we never picked it up, because just so busy on other things. So, um, yeah, that's probably the biggest one for me. And maybe the other one is Aliens vs. Predator. No, 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 sorry, I got that wrong. Aliens Colonial Marines. Now... I'm weird in that I quite like that game. Yes, it wasn't great. It wasn't. It wasn't in no way a very good shooter. But um, and the story was crap. And you know it wasn't very kind of ingenuity. The, you know, there wasn't much kind of cleverness behind it. Um, the the audio effects were terrible. It did crash a little bit as well. But other than all that, it was actually not too bad. <laughs> Um, and I, I kind of wanted to complete it. I, I remember saying to myself, you know, no, I'm gonna, gonna, I'm gonna grin and bear it and muscle through and try and complete it because you know it is an aliens game, and my my love for the whole aliens franchise is so strong because you know I, I grew up. I think Alien and a sorry, not Alien, Aliens and Aliens Three um, were the two films that I just watched over and over. And um, people don't like Alien Three and and Beyond, and I'm, I'm maybe with you there. Um, but Aliens, I just thought was one of the, was it John Cameron, one of his finest kind of military hardware, you know, generating IPs ever. I mean, Avatar would never have happened if he hadn't have done Aliens before. So you know, this this is a shame. And and getting back to my topic, I think there's so many kind of games that you buy and you just start playing, but you realise, wow, I'm never going to complete this. It's going to take too long, or it's not engaging enough. And I think that's a shame. So post in the comments, today's little posty challenge is, is tell me a, a game that you've bought because you really wanted it, but yet you've never completed it. And it has to be a game with a tangible end. So you can't just say, oh, I bought Minecraft, never completed it. Actually, do you know what? Minecraft does have a an end now, doesn't it? That ender dragon bollocks. Uh, okay, so you can't do Minecraft. But tell me what games you've bought and maybe never um, finished. For me, it's probably Aliens vs Predator. Oh my god, I keep saying it. Aliens, Colonial Marine, um, and I think the... Did I did I ever complete Aliens vs Predator, the new one they did? No, I don't think I did. So, yeah, I just... I never bothered, I guess. Um, Borderlands 2 was a big shame for me because we just played the hell out of Borderlands 1, and I did love that game. I thought it was just excellent. It was exactly what co-op um, multiplayer games should be. It's what Dust should be. There should be the ability to do missions like they do in Borderlands, where you can play as a gang. If they ever did that, then Dust would just be awesome. It really would. It would just be even more awesome. Uh, let me think. So I think, yeah, generally there's probably no kind of big named games in there. Things like Call of Duty and, you know, uh, do you know what? I never even played the single player of Battlefield 4. 
that's pretty bad isn't it i might go and have a game of that <laughs> oh my god i'm terrible aren't i just i don't you know sometimes i i buy a game with the view that all right when i get a moment i'll sit down and play that but it happens so rarely nowadays and i, I honestly do mean that i don't generally get much time to do anything um other than like a saturday morning which just happens to be today it's saturday morning hello and um this is then just doing as many videos as i can and i think this is kind of sad really so i'm gonna i'm gonna find time to do this i think when i that's just the pc if i look at all of the games that i've bought on uh the ps3 and the xbox my god i just have a stack of them that again i've never completed so was it um what was the one I really loved on the advent calendar? Um, Dead Space, that was it. Dead Space 3, 4, was it 3, was it? I think it was 3, wasn't it? Um, nope, never completed it. Loved it, got into it, started playing it, and then moved on to the next game for the next day of the advent calendar. And it was like, oh, for God's sake, dude. You know, it just, it, I never get the time to do it, and it, it does bother me a little bit. Anyway, let's stop waffling about that bollocks. Let's talk about this game, Banished. As you can see, we now have a mine running. And mines produce iron that you can then obviously use for tools, etc., and building other stuff. Now, again, this is a simple game. The reason it is only like 15 pounds or 20 bucks um, is by design, because it's, I don't think there's a great in-depth detail of, of game here. Do you know what I mean? I, I, and I think they've priced it very, very reasonably. <clears throat> They've made it a price that I think reflects the core, the content in the game, which is a, just a city builder, a, a good city builder. It doesn't give you missions. It doesn't give you this and that to do. It's all about, go on then, bro. Here's the mechanics. Enjoy. And I love games like that. It's like Space Engineers. Imagine if Space Engineers had missions. Don't know. That might not work. I'm, I'm, I'm skeptical on that one. If Minecraft had missions, well, you know, proper missions, like... You know, ye oldie minecrafty blocky man heady, go create this thing and, and go kill this thingy thing here. It's just like, no, it wouldn't work, would it? Because, again, games that tell you what to do shouldn't be that popular, in my mind. Um, I have a, this, this is where I have an issue with Eve and Dust, because Eve and Dust both give you this kind of ticking clock, crying mechanic, baby kind of style mechanic -y thing, which means that every time somebody attacks your district or somebody attacks your POS or your, your system, you know, holding grabby thing, um, you then have to react to it. And I hate games that tell me when to play. Uh, it's, it's kind of rude, isn't it? When you, when you break it down and think about it, that's kind of insane game design, isn't it? To sort of say, right, well, if you want to keep it, you better be online. And it's like, well, I don't want to be. I've got a date. Oh, I've got, I'm going out with my mates. Oh, you know, I'm going to be <clears throat> doing something more fun. Or I want to go and play this game. You know, I hate the fact that some games are like, don't care, mate, you better log on, you're going to lose your shit. And I'm, I really don't like that. <laughs> I think I always, I always laughed at the way that Paul's player and structure warfare worked for years in E, which was just literally you had a timer and um, you had to set your timer for your strongest time zone. And then you had to fight around this structure. And if you killed it, you took the system. And I laugh at it because now I think about it, the amount of times I had to alarm clock and wake up to provide Titan support um, to a fleet of, of, of dudes from all time zones to then you know keep a system in, in a game that really didn't matter. It does make me laugh and it, it, just, it does make me smile how sometimes we do make the absolute frivolous the most important thing in the world ever. And I think districts became this in dust, if I'm honest with you. I mean, when we had our districts, we we def we've defended them for quite a while, and I, I knew because we won every single battle we had. But then all of a sudden, we just I think realised why are we doing this? Why why you know again? And it's another attack comes in, and it's like I don't know eight in the morning, and I'm never going to turn on my PS3 at eight in the morning before I go to work and and sit and fight, you know, some other dudes from some time zone, God knows when, to keep a little bit of electronic pixels in one colour or another. I just realized how little it mattered and I think that's kind of the problem is that I think that you know sometimes we do place such severity and sincerity into um, quite honestly things that really just don't matter well that got a bit heavy didn't it I know banished is one of these games that just is the the I guess the un the, the anti situation to this because you decide when you play it you pick it up you play it you have a bit of fun and when you're done with it you're like save move on and I, I, I got to admit, I can't stand the amount of games now that are just becoming persistent. So, for example, at the moment, Space Engineers is a great example of this. I, I log into my map when I want to. And then when I'm done with it, 
I turn it off. But when the server you know, server architecture comes in, it means that overnight some cheeky bugger could have gone onto my server and killed half my stuff and I would never have known. And that, uh, I have an issue with that. I do have a major issue with that. Because I don't really want to be told when to play games. I'm sorry, bros. I really am. I, I do not. I refuse to. Um, because I think that's what makes it too hardcore. And I think game developers love the concept of it, so they sit there and say, do you know what, that would be awesome if we could do that. It would mean everyone would have to play and fight and be on their guard and that. And it's like, yeah, it's a nice idea. It does kind of work, but I think the reality is, is no. Not, not for certain players like me who don't care. We're not image-driven. We're not, you know, we, we don't look to make friends. We're here to have fun and entertain ourselves. And it doesn't mean that we're going to alarm, you know, a group of grown men alarm clocking to, to defend a district against somebody who, you know, who's just in a different time zone or even alarm clocking themselves. Who knows? Um, it's always come across to me as just massively sad. And I hated when I did it in Eve as well. And I did it for years. And I, I used to sort of groan and moan about it. And, you know, my partner back in the time would sort of they'd just say what a sad wanker I was for doing it. It's like, why are you doing it? And I'm like... I don't know. <laughs> I sort of get up and make a cup of coffee, then turn the computer on, and I sit there, literally, you know, not playing the game, just sat AFK, or not AFK, just sat at the keyboard waiting for something to happen, and it would just be like some massive standoff fight between two gangs of lads, who none of which want to actually mess up their pretty faces. And I always remember just thinking, going, you know, literally going to work, thinking, God, I've got to put five o'clock this morning to go and sit at a, you know, a, a planet cloaked, waiting for something to bloody happen. And I, I can't stand that thought. And dust is just the same for me. So, in summary, I guess Banished is one of these games that will give you a very relaxing, cooling, but also when you want it, hit of uh, of electronic entertainment. And I think it's incredibly worth your time. So go buy it now. That is an order. Hope you enjoyed that. See you next time.